I, this is one of my favorite events of the year, and one of the reasons it is one of my favorite events is because I, I, I look out and I always get a sense of the history, the proud history of McKinney and McKinney ISD. And I can always tell when people are enjoying each other's company. Lots of hugs, lots of smiles, lots of storytelling on each other. Always a good time. So uh, I appreciate you being here at our wonderful facility, and uh, I hope that you enjoy this, this day. To our honorees today, we certainly hope that we uh, provide an opportunity to acknowledge what you mean to our, to our district and to our city and to the, the fine history of McKinney ISD. So on to our class of 2020, and I'm just going to give a few highlights, and then I'm going to sit down, and we're going to get it started. But first is going to be Johnny Holly, and Johnny was a three-sport uh, star at McKinney High, and he quarterbacked the 1979 state championship team. He was also a state qualifier in track, as well as a three-time all-district uh, basketball player. Darla Sessom. Darla could have been put in as a coach or an athlete, either one. Uh, she starred in volleyball, basketball, and track at McKinney, went on to East Texas State and had a great career there. She returned to McKinney, um, and she was the head coach of, and took the volleyball team in 1990 uh, to the state tournament. More than that, uh, excuse me, anybody that knows Darla knows that uh, – Watch Coach Fetchy do this last night at a football banquet. I said, I'm not doing that tomorrow, and here I am doing it. Um, her, you know, Darla's legacy will always be the person she is and the, um, the role model that she's been for kids uh, and coaches for 30 years in this school district. So, uh, Darla Sessel. James Thornton was a standout running back at McKinney High in 1990. Uh, he was the 4A player of the year. And uh, his, his 3,844 rushing yards is still um, all-time third uh, place at McKinney High School. Colin Beto. Colin Beto was a record-setting receiver at McKinney North and Missouri Southern. He still holds many, many records at both schools. Uh, he was inducted into the Missouri Southern Hall of Honor two years ago in 2018. And not to mention, I personally could not have hand-picked uh, a better player to help me start the McKinney North program um, and set a culture. Uh, unbelievable work ethic and grit, uh, and he will be inducted today. Empress Drain. Empress was an all-state basketball player and a state qualifying sprinter at McKinney High School. She continued her career at North Texas State, where she became uh, the school's all-time career leading rebounder. Kathy Shelton. Kathy was a, a three-sport star at McKinney North, volleyball, basketball, and softball, but she was special in softball. She was all-state. She went on to Baylor, and she was all Big 12. She was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, and she still holds their all-time stolen base record. The 1986 McKinney Lions football team. They went 14-2 and on the year. They were state runner-ups. They dominated their playoff appearance and, or opponent, excuse me, uh, scoring 227 points and allowing 67. Uh, you know, I feel like I know those guys. Uh, I've mentioned the coaches that I mentored under earlier when I got here, and I heard all the stories, uh, many, many stories of the 86 football team. Um, and I actually am y'all's age, and I grew up in Plano, so I was in Plano, and I don't know if y'all remember that year, but there was a number of Collin County teams that made the state championship, and they were talking about Collin County being the – you know, the state capital of uh, the Collin or county capital of football in the state of Texas. So I kept up with you guys, and then I heard all those stories. And then uh, a funny story, when I, I left Plano my sophomore year and went to Abilene High to try to live with my dad, I didn't make it through the season. I finished weeks 9 and 10 back in Plano. But my head coach was a guy named Dan Compton, and he had come from Hereford. And uh, though he taught, tried to talk me into staying, Three weeks after that season, he left too and went back to Hereford. And uh, after the state semifinal game, we just finished playing LV Bell at Texas Stadium, and McKinney was playing right behind us. And as I was leaving to go get on the bus, the Hereford bus pulled in. They had our locker room, you know, and so I went over, and Coach Compton gave me a big hug, and, and we kind of, you know, visited for a second. And I said, Coach, I've been keeping up with McKinney. I mean, how you feel about him? And he said, well, you know, they got a really good running back, but after that, he goes, I, I think we're better than they are. And he goes, I feel pretty good about it. And I was like, all right. So we go team dinner. We get back to Plano, and I find it on the radio. 
I don't remember the score, but it was a whole lot, to very, very little. And uh, I just remember going, I bet you Coach Compton uh, regrets saying what he said to me because it wasn't, it wasn't even close. But we're excited about inducting that team today. Coach Randy Hales. Coach Hales led the McKinney baseball team for 20 years, winning over 400 games and eight district championships. And as I mentioned earlier, I was, I was blessed to work with Coach Hales at McKinney High uh, as one of my mentors in that, in that football office. And we're, we're proud of him. So there's your, there's your uh, 2020 class that we're about to, to put in. It's a, it's a rich tradition uh, in McKinney with a lot of great athletes and great coaches and great people, and we're excited to get that started. So if you will turn your attention to the screens, uh, we will have our first inductee. Senior era inductee, Johnny Holly, Being the quarterback of McKinney's only football state championship team alone, puts Johnny Holly in distinguished company. But as a three-sport star for the Lions, he finished his career as a highly decorated competitor in basketball and track as well. Holly was a three-time All-District guard in basketball and was selected All-State as a junior. In track, he was a part of a state qualifying 4 by 100 meter relay and 4 by 400 meter relay teams in his junior season in 1978. As quarterback, Holly threw for more than 1,200 yards as a junior, but the Lions fell short of the playoffs with a 6-4 record. Early in his senior season, the team started 2-3, and, and another year without the playoffs seemed on the horizon. But then Holly guided the Lions to 10 wins in the next 11 games and a 20-7 victory over Bay City in the 3A title game at the Astrodome. Following his senior football season, Holly was selected to the Folgers All-America team and was a first-team All-Metroplex selection. Holly continued his playing career at Texas Southern University, where he started three seasons at quarterback and punter. He also played basketball for a season at TSU. One of 10 children of Herman and Betty Holly, Johnny worked in the family construction business and has worked for the city of Plano for the past 23 years. For his leadership and dedication to his family, his school, and his community. The Hall of Honor inducts Johnny Holly into the class of 2020. I don't know why they made me first. I guess because I'm the oldest. <laughs> anybody I feel it too. But I'd like to thank the committee for nominating me. And uh, thank you, Coach Ron Poe and all the coaching staff on the team that was special that year in 1979. I really appreciate the things you guys done for us. I'd like to thank all of my family and friends who made it today, all my brothers and sisters, my sister-in-law, my all my kids, and <laughs> just everybody at these two tables. <laughs> and I think a lot of people were uh, just come here to see what I was going to say. And, uh, it wasn't going to be much. It's just, it's just the person I am, and I just want to, I can say thank everybody for coming out today, and thank all the, uh, just everybody who had something to do with my nomination for being here today. Thank you. Senior era inductee, Darla Sessom, a three-sport star from 1978 to 1982. Darla Sessom never seemed to back down from a challenge on the field or in life. She was part of district championship teams in basketball and track and a zone championship in volleyball, often leading out front. Sessom was a top point producer on four straight district championship teams in track, qualifying for the regional meet in the 400 meter relay, 800 meter relay, triple jump, and the 100 meter hurdles, and then advancing to the state meet in the 100 meter hurdles in her senior season. A guard on the Lionettes basketball team her sophomore, junior, and senior seasons, Sessom helped MHS to three consecutive district championships. She continued her track career at East Texas State University, running in a variety of events, including cross country, and twice qualified for the NCAA Division II national meet in the 400 meter hurdles. Twice, she was named the school's track MVP, and she earned the prestigious Lib Huggins Award in track after her sophomore season. Sessom married fellow MHS graduate and Hall of Honor inductee Mike Sessom and began her coaching career after graduation. And within three years, she came home to teach and coach at her alma mater. In her first season as varsity volleyball coach, 
she guided the Lionettes to their only state tournament appearance. For the next 29 years, she served McKinney ISD unselfishly and gracefully before retiring at the end of the 2019 school year. For her relentless commitment and dedication to her countless former student athletes, her school, and her family, the Athletic Hall of Honor inducts Darla Sessom as part of the class of 2020. Johnny, I want to thank you for um, only taking a, about a minute and a half because I'm going to probably use your time <laughs> on mine. Uh, those of y'all that know me, I'm, I like to talk a lot, so I'm going to do my best. I, Coach Homer has sent about 45 emails saying, please keep this to four minutes, please keep this to four minutes, and he was probably talking about me, and if not, probably Coach Hales. So... <laughs> Anyhow, so Johnny, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, and I wrote some notes, so I'll try to not chase rabbits, okay, and get off, get off track. I want to start off <clears throat> by thanking the committee uh, for selecting me for this huge honor. I would also like to congratulate the other inductees and tell y'all how humble I am that I was deemed worthy to share this with y'all. To the athletic staff, uh, Coach Pratt, Coach Frazier, uh, for starting this yearly tradition. I believe this is the fifth year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, to Coach Homer and to Patty for uh, their work that um, spearheading this off. Uh, to the rest of the athletic staff, it truly takes a, a village. Uh, Coach Cahey, Coach, um, uh, I'm sorry, Shelly Ladd, Connie Dow, Shannon Frazier, uh, thank y'all so much, and the others that um, that have uh, that have worked to put this on today, for the support of Dr. McDaniel and the rest of the MISD uh, administration, who have embraced this yearly event. I, I thank you for that. Uh, to my special guest tonight uh, or this afternoon, Dr. Wilson. He was my family physician growing up, and has uh, continued encouraging me um, and supporting me even to this day. And I appreciate him taking the time to be here. Those of y'all that know me know that I love quotes and motivational sayings. So when thinking of what I was going to say today, I came across this gem that I thought was very appropriate for what I have to share. And it says, God is in the details. If we take the time to stop, look closely, and reflect, we can see his hand in everything. Let me share some of the details that have influenced my life and career. 1972, my parents made the decision to move our family from Farmer's Branch to McKinney. So because of this, I grew up on a farm riding horses, uh, spending most of my time outdoors. Some of that outdoor time was hauling hay and picking okra uh, during the summertime, which at the time I felt like it was cruel and unusual punishment, but little did I know I was learning the value of hard work. When I moved into middle school, I had the opportunity to participate in sports. In the 70s girls sports, as most of you know, uh, was a relatively new thing in McKinney, but thanks to Title IX, uh, volleyball, basketball, and uh, track was offered in McKinney, and I jumped at the opportunity. I've always kind of been a little bit of a tomboy. I, I think it was that I was the third of the family, and, you know, I have two older sisters, and I think Mom and Dad were, at least Dad, I'm sure, was hoping that I'd be the boy, but I'd let him down on that one, but anyhow, made it up by hauling the hay. Uh, but I especially liked track, and when hurdles were introduced to me, I was so excited that I went home and wanted to practice more, but obviously there weren't any hurdles laying around the house, so what did I do? I improvised. I found that our wooden picnic table in the backyard, when it was tumped over, was just about the right height of a hurdle, so I'd run around the house and hurdle, run around the house and hurdle, and I continued to do this until I got the hang of it. Moving into high school, I was blessed to have the best coaches in the state. Again, this is, I believe, a God thing. Uh, Coach Duncan and Coach Hales uh, had a way of motivating, inspiring, and instilling in me a drive to never give up, to never finish. I'm sorry, never finish. <laughs> never quit. <laughs> and to finish what you start. And that has stayed with me even to today. Quick story, my senior year in high school, Coach Duncan was my 
track coach, and uh, I don't know if she remembers this, but I really do. Uh, at the regional meet, I had uh, qualified for state in the 100 meter hurdles, and when I was done, or so I thought with all of my running events, I was up in the stands eating my lunch and celebrating, and I had just finished eating a Twinkie. And I hear, Darla Jane, Darla Jane. And of course, that's Coach Duncan's, that's what she calls me. <laughs> I look around at her, and there she is motioning to me, and I thought, oh, no. And I got that kind of that sick feeling in my stomach. Sure enough, one of the girls uh, who was supposed to run the mile relay decided that she didn't want to run that day. So unbeknownst to me, Coach Duncan had put me down as an alternate on that mile relay. Now, you got to understand, I was a short sprinter. The farthest distance I'd ever competed was the 200 meters. Well, I was raised that you never, you never say no to a coach. Coach asks you to do something, it's yes, ma'am, and you do it. So Coach Duncan, you can do this, Darla. You can do this. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She threw me in at anchor leg. I'm, I'm really not sure why. I... I guess she was thinking that, you know what, the first three legs, they can, if they get a good enough lead, then maybe Darla could manage to, to hang on to that lead. Uh, who knows? But when I got the baton, we were not in first. We weren't in second. And we weren't in third. <laughs> so when I get the baton, I, I take off like a house of fire. Um, and I was passing runners and passing runners and I, all I'm hearing are my teammates yelling, slow down, Darla, slow down. And I'm thinking, why? I'm catching people, you know? Well, I round that second curve, and those of y'all that are familiar with track know that that monkey can jump on your back. Well, that last 100 meters, uh, my teammates at that time, they were, you know, weren't having to tell me to slow down. They were yelling, pick up your knees, pick up your knees. <laughs> I'm not sure how I made it to the finish line, but I, I did. Uh, and famous last words, I said, I am never, ever, ever going to run that far again. <laughs> well, God and the details here, okay? Fast forward to college. I was blessed to be offered a, a full ride to East Texas, and I'm sure that's because Coach Duncan and Coach Hales probably sold me and made me sound better than I was, and I am grateful for that. Um, but at that time, the collegiate hurdles were, the 100 meter hurdles were 33 inches. And my high school hurdles were 30 inches. You know, I'm 5'4 on a good day. And um, 33 inches just was very difficult for me. And indoor track that fall uh, was not very kind to me. I was not used to getting beat. And I was getting beat. Um, and I was afraid that I would lose my scholarship. And um, so I somehow find that there's such a race called the 400 meter hurdles. And these hurdles, believe it or not, were 30 inches like I was used to running in high school. So I had actually, thanks to Coach Duncan, had run the 400 meters in high school and it didn't kill me. So I thought, you know, why not? So pretty much the rest is history. Uh, I go to my coach, and uh, Coach Burt, I, I asked her, I said, Coach Burt, do you mind if I try these 400-meter hurdles out? And she was like, oh, I am so glad you asked because this isn't a race that you can force somebody to run. So I spent the next four years running, among other things, the 400-meter hurdles, and uh, as was uh, announced, I was uh, blessed to have uh, qualified for nationals twice. So Coach Duncan, thank you for throwing me in those in that quarter, it, uh, it, it made a difference. After graduation and moving into my professional career, I spent a year at Cumbie High School, and if y'all don't know where Cumbie is, come talk to me later, uh, and two years at Reigns High School. Then in 1990, McKinney's, uh, McKinney High's volleyball position opened up, and I applied. Coach Duncan, who was the girls' athletic coordinator at the time, took a chance on me and put my name up before Coach Poe, and fortunately, uh, they hired me with only three years of high school experience. Again, I truly believe this is a God thing. That year, we were uh, blessed to make it to the Final Four in volleyball and qualified for state, which was definitely a God thing, which Theresa Barnett, 
who was my assistant at the time, she can testify to because she said, darling, we have no business being here. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> However, as uh, many of you know, uh, that December, Mike and I were involved um, in, uh, in our terrible car accident. But fortunately, God had it in his plan that we'd be back home, that I would be back home in McKinney teaching and coaching, which I would enjoy for the next 29 years. Coincidence? No. God and the details. I often wonder why the accident was in God's plan for us, but had it not happened, I probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to coach Hall of Inductees, Hall of Honor inductees Emperor Strain, Kathy Shelton, Jamie Critchfield, and Tracy Gahan, and have had the opportunity to coach with some incredible people uh, who are here today, Kristen White, Susan Goodman, and Theresa Barnett. I am incredibly blessed, and I'm so grateful. In closing, uh, I want to say to my parents, thank you for your love, your support, and your guidance. There was never, ever a volleyball game or a basketball game or a track meet that you did not attend. Always cheering me on with Mother had a way she can whistle. You can hear it a mile away. And my dad with his go big blue, woohoo! That's that's what he would always be yelling in the bleachers. On weekends when I would come home from college, Mama, you'd always have my favorite meal cooked. And Daddy, you you never failed to slip a twenty in my hand, even when you didn't have ten dollars to give. And Mama, you're my prayer warrior. You never cease praying for me every day. To my big sisters, Danis and Danielle, y'all have been there every step of my life. And my nieces and nephews and their families, thank y'all for being here and supporting me. And thank you to my in-laws uh, who loved me even before I became a part of the family and for your continued love and support for me and Mike. To Coach Duncan, thank you for your example your guidance and friendship. When I was coaching, I tried to emulate how you handled kids and parents and your coaches, and I would always ask myself, what would Glenna do? To my husband, Mike, the man who even before we started dating uh, supported me, you cheered me on at ball games and at track meets, and once we were married, you've always supported me. The, we interrupt this marriage to bring you the volleyball season or the track season or the basketball season or the cross country season. Uh, you've always understood the time involved with coaching and I love you and thank you for that. I share this honor with all who have been a part of my life, big and small, because of you, I'm standing here today. I am more than blessed and thankful that God has been and will continue to have a hand in all the details of my life. Thank you very much. Darla, can you come back up here for a moment? We have one surprise, one small little surprise for you. While she's walking back up here, <laughs> how, what was her time? Was it four minutes? I feel like it was longer. I promise I will not be that long. I, I, oh, good, you're timing. Time me. Time. I've got one minute. Here we go. Darla, we've all known you through several years, myself 25, some of these kids were coached by you and now they worked with you. Um, through the years, I, I was thinking and thinking, what am I going to say today, what am I going to say? I, and through the years, one word always came up when Darla was mentioned, and that's she's a saint. She's a saint, and God pours through you daily and we all see it. You are a saint. I'm going to give you one little example just of what my kids experienced with her at a track meet a few years ago. Um, kids were down there. There was a group from a different district, and they didn't know what they were doing. They couldn't find their coach. They were looking around, and Darla noticed them. She pulled them off and said, guys, are you all in the relay? Yes. She got them where they needed to be, cheering them on just like they were her own kids. They raced, she got them at the end, did a, did a, a cool down with them, high-fived them, and she's, she's willing to pour into anybody and everybody she meets. Now, if it was Highland Park, she might not have done that, but... <laughs> <laughs> she, 
she pours into everybody greatness, and what she gets out is greatness. As you can tell, she has been loved so much by so many. Goodness, I'm getting choked up. Darla, we want to honor you with the Darla Sessom Honorarium Scholarship Fund through the McKinney Education Foundation, which will provide an annual scholarship awarded through the McKinney Education for students for years to come. So your legacy will forever be lived on. I wanted to say, if you are interested in donating funds to the scholarship, please see Empress or myself or Ashley sign, and we will give you information on how to donate. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I wasn't ready for this, so thank you very much. I'm, I'm blessed. Senior Era inductee, James Thornton. For three seasons, James Thornton played running back for Coach Ron Poe's McKinney Lions with a target on his back. Though defenses were specifically designed to stop him, Thornton finished his career with the most rushing yards in a game, most rushing yards in a season, and most rushing yards in a career. He still remains among the top three in two of those categories and six in another. But Thornton's accomplishments remain hard to compare, considering he did them in three 10-game seasons. He was the first Lion to rush for more than 2,000 yards in the regular season when he did so in 1990 and his 365 yards and five rushing touchdowns versus Coppell were at the time all-time school bests. Thornton's awards in football were numerous and included being named All-State and All-American after his senior season. He was the district sophomore of the year and twice he was named the Offensive Player of the Year. One of Thornton's memorable games came as a junior when he rushed for more than 200 yards and three touchdowns in a 28-21 win over Highland Park the Lions' first victory over the Scots in 56 years. With Thornton as the focal point of the McKinney offense, the Lions won eight of 10 games and suffered losses by seven and five points respectively. Thornton, who finished his high school career with 3,844 rushing yards and 46 touchdowns, continued his playing career at Western New Mexico, but a severe knee injury limited his playing time. Nonetheless, his stature as one of the most accomplished players in McKinney High School history remains. For his reliability and outstanding achievement on the field, the Athletic Hall of Honor inducts James Thornton as part of the class of 2020. How's everyone doing today? This is one of the greatest honors that I probably ever will have in my entire life. So. Um, there was things trying to get in the way, trying to make it a bad day for me. But I get up, and I had bought a suit especially for this day, and I couldn't wear it. <laughs> so I go in and try another suit. I couldn't wear that either. So, <laughs> oh, and my speech, my speech was, I've had written four of them, four different speeches. Each one is at least 20 minutes. So... <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm just going to go from the top of my head, and um, I want to thank God. And, you know, without this, without God, none of this would be possible. And uh, my grandparents for raising my, grand my, my, my parents and for them raising us the way we did. And we are all fortunate to come from McKinney High School, believe me, because when I was in college, I got to go see other kids and see where they went to school, and they had nothing compared to to, to what we had and the coaches. And also when um, I would bring some home and they would plan to stay three, four days, you know, and they ended up staying two or three weeks. They didn't want to leave McKinney. They'd see McKinney High and say, why, wow, that's not a school, that's a college. No, that's McKinney High, you know. And <laughs> had a great life here. Now, I want to thank uh, everyone in the back backgrounds of this and uh, all the committee and everyone that had anything possible to make this happen. And this is a great honor. I'll never forget it. My family, thank you guys for, and all the friends and, and 
enemies, which I can't. I don't even remember if I had any enemies. You know, I can't even name any. But uh, it's a great honor. It, I love playing for McKinney High, and I wouldn't change it for the world. I wouldn't change my life and do anything over. I'd do it the same way. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Modern era inductee, Colin Bado. When he scored the first touchdown in the history of McKinney North Varsity football, it should have been obvious that Colin Bado was no ordinary student athlete. In his final game at North, he etched his name in the Bulldog record books by grabbing 12 passes for 220 yards and two touchdowns and adding a kickoff return for a touchdown. Bado was a three sport star at McKinney North and left a legacy at each stop along his journey. His 142 career receptions and 15 catches in a single game remain as Bulldog school records. Beto continued his football career at Missouri Southern, where he also established school records in season and career pass receptions and led all NCAA Division II receivers in catches in 2006. A three-time all-conference selection, Beto was inducted into the Missouri Southern Hall of Fame in 2018. Beto's post-playing journey has been an adventure, with stints as a political consultant and a sous chef before he ventured into education in 2013. Today, Beto is an instructional coach at McKinney Boyd High School. In addition, he's been working on the creation of a nonprofit dedicated to supporting young adults battling depression and other mental health issues. For his excellence in the field as a teammate, classmate, and fellow citizen, the Hall of Honor inducts Colin Beto into the class of 2020. When I first got here, uh, walking up the stairs, I think I hugged about 20 people. And uh, that was before my family even got here. It's just kind of a reminder after being in McKinney for almost 30 years now, a reminder of uh, how special this place is. I was speaking to Empress a second ago, and it seems like yesterday, it was August 30th, and we were all gathering down there on the sidelines, and I took a step back and I realized how much love and camaraderie there was amongst athletes and coaches. And then I caught eyes with Coach Poe, and I went over and introduced myself, because the first time I met him, I was probably eight years old. Because all I wanted to do when I was eight years old was go to McKinney High School football camp every single summer. Every summer I just couldn't wait to go meet Coach Poe and then to work with Cedric Mack, Coach Harden, Coach Hodges, and Coach Pratt. So from there, I fell in love with the game. And then sure enough, in 2000, my whole life actually I wanted to meet McKinney Lion. And in 2000, I found out I was going to be a Bulldog. Because back then, we used to go to homecoming parades in the square. And in 2000, the second high school opened up. And here's Coach Pratt again. Now I see him as an adult, or quasi, I guess. <laughs> and from 2000 to 2004, I was so blessed to watch him grow and for him to guide me along with Coach Don Drake, Coach Rod Washington, Coach Jim Bob Puckett, amongst others and help guide me and help me understand what it means to be a servant leader along the way, to be humble, to be a man of character. And then fast forward 10 years later, 2013-14, I find myself back in McKinney High School, or excuse me, back in McKinney, and I meet with Coach Pratt and tell him, I've done all these things, I went to school, and I tried these different life paths, they didn't, just didn't work out, and I need to be around people, I need to help, I need to teach. And through his guidance, I was afforded the opportunity to get a job at McKinney Boyd. <clears throat> Since then, it's been, a, it's been wonderful and a sense of gratitude to be able to work with kids. And now I can finally understand what exactly those coaches and all those people who impacted me were doing for me, even though I didn't even realize it at the time. And the sacrifice, the sleepless nights, that I can't say thank you enough a thousand times over. Because while I'm up here because of my accolades or whatever, it wouldn't be without those coaches, my family. It wouldn't be without them, and I wouldn't be here today. Because they taught me so much about character and camaraderie, 
What I've learned is I need to surround myself with people who, att- who, who better me, who challenge me. Don't let me be complacent. And because of those people, like Stuart Apgar, Coach Kehi, Coach Erica Rennell, who's like the best teacher coach I've ever met in my entire life. I told you, I didn't even drop you. I told you. Because without them, again, I wouldn't have that guidance to continue to grow. <clears throat> to my family, especially my parents, my brother, his husband, as well as my sister, her husband, my girlfriend, Courtney, couldn't be here today. Thank you for being the foundation and always being there for me. And as I th- say thank you to the committee, I also want to leave with, I too, Coach Sessoms, and a quote person as well, right? Try to steal some for my own. <clears throat> Is we used to have team meetings uh, every week uh, when I was in high school at McKinney North, and we'd have a uh, scouting report, and Coach Pratt, we would read usually a quote on the front, and to this day, this has always stuck with me. Obviously, everybody's probably heard of it, Daring Greatly by Theodore Roosevelt. But I read this as a reminder to you to hopefully understand that life is going to be the struggle and that you're supposed to fail, that you're supposed to fall, you're supposed to get dirty. Because it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short and short and time and time again because there is no effort without error and shortcomings. But who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. Thank you. Modern Era inductee, Empress Drain. When it came to individual excellence and team achievements, very few student athletes can match the resume of McKinney High School's Empress Drain. During all four of her years as a Lionette, she was a leader and a vital part of the school's standout basketball and track teams. In basketball, she was twice the district's Offensive Player of the Year, as well as a state all-star game selection as a senior. In track, she qualified for the regional meet three different seasons in multiple events, and she was a member of the 1996 mile relay team that established a school record in winning a bronze medal at the state meet. Drain continued her basketball career at the University of North Texas, where she earned a BBA in entrepreneurship and strategic management. At UNT, she finished as the program's career rebound leader and remains in the top 10 in 11 other statistical categories. In 1998, Drain received the Arthur Ashe Award, which nationally recognizes minority collegiate student athletes. Perhaps her career after college can be considered just as impressive. A community organizer and volunteer, she has coordinated activities and special events focused on low-income youth and engagement of all in her hometown. A recipient of the Collin County NAACP Trailblazer Award and the Chamber of Commerce Trailblazer Award Drain became the first African-American appointed city secretary in the history of McKinney in 2018. For her indelible legacy in representing McKinney High School and the city of McKinney, the Hall of Honor inducts Empress Drain into the class of 2020. I, uh, I plan to get up here and read something really quickly and make sure that I didn't get emotional, but uh, standing in the presence of so many people that I see, um, it's very hard not to. Let me pull this open so I can stay on track. Uh, I can't get my pad open, so I'm gonna just try to wing it. I, pro- I promise not to uh, stay up here long. I definitely won't take as much time as Coach Sesson because I definitely haven't. <laughs> Uh, not because I don't have as much to say, but because I know that my uh, my my opportunities to to participate and the the work that I have is just it, it doesn't it doesn't add up, Coach. So start there. But I want to thank God for this opportunity to share this time and space with you all. So many people in the crowd that um, uh, that means so much to my life uh, in athletics and my family. 
uh, in your church, in the community. Uh, it means a lot because I stand here not in representation of anything that I have done. But mm, because of the generosity, so many people in my life, I've never gone without support or encouragement. Uh, there's never been an opportunity uh, to spend time with people who don't fail to tell you what you cannot do. Um, and that's a luxury that I know everybody doesn't really have that privilege. Uh, but as a, as a student ap athlete in McKinney, I think James said it very well. It is so special because when you have, the again, the privilege to put on a uniform and it's got McKinney across the front and you represent your city and you represent your school campus, uh, Everybody doesn't get that opportunity, and you, you really embrace that, and you cherish that, and you inherit a family of uh, your student body, your, your, your teachers, your coaches, um, your teammates um, that you carry with you for your life. Um, a reporter asked me uh, not too long ago, what was your favorite memory? You know, what's your biggest game? What's your biggest accomplishment? And I really, honestly, I don't think about that a lot. When I think about the success of being able to participate in athletics, I think about all the things that I've taken from all of the givers. Um, there's so many people who have given to me, and I, I feel a little selfish, and I feel a little embarrassed and humbled to be here because I'm, I'm not standing up here alone. I'm standing up here with uh, my family, and again, my church, my community, everybody. Um, I, I'm really overwhelmed. Um, but... A couple of folks that I do want to point out, you know, if you spend any amount of valuable time with me, I'm going to tell you that my grandmother was the icon of my life. And uh, she raised me up from a baby. And uh, through her, I saw an example of giving and sacrifice and love. And uh, as someone who only had the opportunity to go to the eighth grade, she instilled in everyone around us, especially our children and grandchildren, to become educated, and that through that process, you can do anything you want to do. And uh, I admire her so much for that. And if you ever ask me, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? The only answer I had was, I want to be like my grandma. So that's something that I carry with me, and I hope that I kind of at least fulfill a little bit of a fraction of some of the things that she did. Um, and uh, she was my first teacher. She was my first uh, real parent. She was uh, my everything, but she wasn't my only thing. Uh, she needed help, and she got a lot of help. We were raised to, to respect the coaches and respect the teachers in your community, respect your uh, faith community. And so she entrusted those people when we went out into the world. Uh, that they would take care of us and that they would guide us and uh, instill in us, excuse me, the same kind of values that she was teaching us at home. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt, we got that in McKinney High. Uh, my coach is uh, Jesus. Coach Duncan, uh, I hear your voice every day. <laughs> I hear your voice every day. Um, coach Susan was talking about Darla Jane. I think everybody's middle name was Jane with uh, Coach Duncan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, I was Empress Jane. I think I see Christy Jane back there, Misty Jane. Everybody was Jane. I don't know what that was, but uh, what I take from Coach Duncan, uh, I, I hear it in her voice. I was a little bit of a tomboy. Well, I was a lot of a tomboy. And uh, the opportunity to play sports, Coach Duncan would show up in practice. She would show up in games, and she was so fired up. She was so, I call it lit. She was lit up. And uh, you, you could tell that there was something in her heart. She wanted us to do well, but a part of it was like she wanted to get out there and play too. So she, you know, and so if you didn't come with that same type of motivation, she'd tell you, you know, if you're not fired up, if you're not ready to get after it, I don't know what to tell you. And that, is, that just sums it up, and I hear that all the time. And so sometimes when I'm feeling like, oh, gosh, this is going to be a rough day today, I hear Coach Duncan. Uh, I hear Coach Yuri. Um, Coach Yuri, um, I think her first year of coaching in McKinney was my freshman year. And so she told me, she said, hey, um, you know, I had the opportunity to be on varsity in a freshman, uh, my freshman year. And Coach Yuri said, hey, we're in this together. I'm new. You're new. 
Um, but she would always talk to me about what I could do and what she expected of me. She never told me to go out there and try something. She'd say, she put, put a hand on my shoulder, she said, go out there, you're going to get 10 rebounds. I say, okay, coach, I, I'll get it. You know, because she talked with so much faith and conviction and, and, and support of the athletes that you, you felt like, you know, her words were just a cape around you that was going to carry you to whatever it is she wanted to accomplish. And it was the same thing, not only in basketball, but track also. Uh, Cherie Washington is not here, but she was my head coach. Um, and I have, I think, uh, just so much respect for her. She carried herself with so much confidence. And again, she talked about what we will do um, to every single person on that team. I don't know how you manage 20, 30 kids all over the place, all over that track. But we get on that bus, and before we get off the bus, uh, wherever we were, she'd say, hey, we're going to get out there on that track. We're going to win some medals. We're going to win some trophies. We're going to win this meeting. We're going to go home. <laughs> it's just business. And we, that's the way we went about it. We got on that track. We won medals. We won trophies. We won those meets, and we went home. It was the expectation. Um, and you carry that attitude into for life. Uh, thank you, Coach Duncan. Thank you, Coach Sessom. I'm not going to talk about Coach Sessom because I get up here and just not be able to make it. But thank you, Coach Sessom. Uh, my eighth grade year in Fabian, I don't know if you remember this, but it was your first year um, after your accident. And, um, you know, it was like Coach Sessom, you know, we didn't really know her much, but we knew that she had been through this horrific thing. And everybody kind of was like, we don't know what we're going to get. You know, we don't know how this is going to be. Um, but I never – she was so – enthusiastic that season uh, she was so supportive and she gave us so much guidance um, one particular story um, that uh, it, it just kind of speaks to the person that she was when I was in eighth grade I didn't get my physical uh, my, my paperwork done I hadn't done it and we were getting ready to start the season and I literally was like you know what this is not even worth it I'm just gonna not play um, I don't know who to ask. I don't know what to do about this. I'm just not going to play. So I was getting ready at the end of the day to literally not show up for practice and just get on the school bus and go home. But here comes Coach Sessom. She found me and she said, hey, we got to get your paperwork done. So she took me, found me a trainer, and we took my physical and got back in time to play that game. I'll never forget that. Um, there's so many other stories, but that's just the kind of person uh, Coach Sessom is. She didn't have to do that, but she did. Um, and then to, to some of the people in the audience, I, can't, I cannot name everybody. I don't have enough time. Um, I wish my heart was big enough to hold the sentiment of gratitude. Um, and I can't. My heart is not that big. So sometimes that sentiment comes out in the form of tears, so you have to forgive me. Um, but uh, it, there's some special people in this crowd. Uh, Misty and Christy Littrell, their mom, Doris. Um, when, like, like I said, when you get into athletics or you get into a thing, you inherit a family, and that family, the Littrell family, and they adopted me. Um, Doris would be in the crowd cheering for me. Just as loud as she was crying, uh, cheering for Missy and Christy. Um, and it, was, it was almost embarrassing because <laughs> she was loud. And uh, she, don't, don't, don't foul my baby. <laughs> But uh, I, I really appreciate that. That's my family for as long as I live. Uh, Christy and Misty, I, you know, I remember those early mornings. Y'all was coming out from the country in Weston to pick me up, make sure that we get to practice on time. And we had a good time. I mean, going to who has fun getting ready at 6 o'clock in the morning to go to practice? But we had a good time. Uh, and, you know, again, they took me under their wing. They're a little bit older than me, and they just said, hey, we're going to go out and do this. And I'd be worried about what I couldn't do, and, and they just were so supportive. And that's for life. We are sisters for life. This is my mom for life. Um, my family, my, my blood family are here. Um, there are people in the, in the community, Mr. McGowan, Hazel Johnson, my cousin, uh, Cynthia Hewlin, folks that represent Doty High. Um, that's the community that I grew up in. And uh, in Far East McKinney, you have uh, educators who the community knew who they were because of the body of work that they put into making sure that all students had opportunities. And um, that's something that has been ingrained in me. You know, these are people that you look up to and you revere almost with uh, that you all need names on, on buildings. Uh, but. We grew up with that sense of understanding and appreciating that the opportunity 
um, for fairness and equality for everybody is essential uh, in communities and that um, it's a responsibility that we all have to take on. So I appreciate the, the students and the teachers of Doty High for not allowing us to forget that and to holding us accountable for making sure that as we go throughout our lives, we do not take fair and equal opportunity for granted. Okay. And then my family, um, my sons are here. I have three sons. Uh, my nieces are here. Uh, you guys are without a doubt my biggest prize. Um, I am so proud to be your mom. I am so proud to be your aunt. And uh, I'm proud that you get to share in the tradition of McKinney. It doesn't matter what sport you do or what program you go through, you know that you have someone who is going to be your number one fan. And I'm so excited, so thrilled for the things that you will do. And then finally, my brother's here. I have a lot of brothers and sisters. My brother David is here. And uh, there's never been a thing that I ever asked my brother that he didn't do. Uh, he's got a big heart. And uh, sometimes I looked up to him in the role of a father figure, even though he's four years older than me. That's all. Um, growing up, we grew up in different homes. Um, and it wasn't always the best. You know, sometimes you had a bed. Sometimes you slept on the couch. Sometimes you slept on the floor. And so sometimes it wasn't always easy to focus on just being a student. It wasn't always easy to just focus on being an athlete. Um, there were bigger things to worry about. And so I know that I have been afforded the privilege of doing some things that we probably wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. And I know that my siblings have supported me through everything. And I just want to let you know that uh, you standing up here with me. David, Ralph, Mert, Bronwyn, you up here with me. And everything that I do, I hope you know that I am immeasurably proud of what we went through. And, I'm, and standing up here, this ring, this represents so much more than just me. So I want to thank everybody. Um, I know I went over my time. I didn't say everything, but um, that's, that's just my heart. And um, this is truly an honor that just reflects so much about what's good in McKinney. This is really a special city, and I'm just glad and proud to have a, a small part of that history. Thank you. Modern Era inductee, Kathy Shelton. She is perhaps the most accomplished multi-sport athlete in the history of McKinney North High School. Her name remains in the record book as both a high school and a collegiate athlete. It became fairly obvious when Kathy Shelton performed on the field and on the court that she was special. An all-district outside hitter in volleyball and a tenacious rebounder in basketball, Shelton excelled in all of her endeavors. Nevertheless, it was softball where she is best remembered. The accolades were numerous, including All-State selection as a sophomore and district MVP as a junior. As a senior, she was ranked 20th on ESPN's national top seniors list. Shelton was a member of two Bulldog teams that advanced to the regional final and the 2007 team that was a state semifinalist. She left as the school's all-time hits leader and career and single season steals leader. At Baylor University, Shelton set school records for steals in a season and a career and finished third in school history in career runs and fourth all-time in career hits. Three times she was named all Big 12 and she was a part of the 2011 Baylor team that advanced to the College World Series, where she hit 420 for the tournament. For her enduring legacy and individual and team achievement, the Hall of Honor inducts Kathy Shelton into the class of 2020. Thank you. First of all, I just want to say thank you to the committee for this honor. Thank you to my family and friends for being here, for showing up. That's what it's about. Um, you know, as I sat down to think about what I wanted to say today, I think it was the first time I've really... Hi, Coach Sessom. Sorry. 
Um, it's the first time that I've really thought back on my journey here um, in McKinney, um, starting back in seventh grade with Coach Sessom and Coach McCraw, um, all the way through high school. And I really, I just realized that I had coaches that genuinely cared for me and loved for, loved me. And, um, you know, with Coach Sessom, she, man, she was fire. And she taught me so much about working hard and just being passionate about what you do. Um, and it's funny because you said that you can't force someone to do the 400-meter hurdles, but I, I remember being highly encouraged to run the 300-meter hurdles in middle school. Um, no, but and my, I have some other coaches here today, um, Coach Easterly, Coach Rice, Coach Brent, um, and you guys each taught me so much, and I realized that um, with each sport that I played, I always had the coach that I needed. Um, they taught me so much, not just about sports, but my personal growth as well. And so I just want to also thank McKinney ISD for hiring really great people. Um, it's so important, the impact that they have on us, on the kids. I work with students now, um, and it's, it's a hard job. I tried the coaching route after I left Baylor, and personalities, man, it's hard. And I know I was a hard kid, so thank you guys <laughs> for helping me and for pushing me to be better. Um, the lessons that I learned, I take with me um, in everyday life. It's so much bigger than the sports. Um, you guys encouraged me and pushed me to be the best me, and so I just have to say thank you, and thank you so much for this honor. Team inductee, the 1986 McKinney Lions. The 1986 McKinney Lions football team featured an overwhelming and oftentimes dominant offense and a relentless and opportunistic defense. And that combination took them to the Astrodome and the Class 4A state championship game. Behind running back Randy Simmons 2,557 rushing yards and school record 44 touchdowns and the leadership of Charlie Honey, the Lions won their first six games handily. A one-point win over Rockwall was followed by a surprising loss to district rival Paris. But after a convincing victory over West Mesquite, McKinney was back on track in time for the playoffs. The Lions dominated Saginaw, Boswell, and Seagaville before gutting out a 24-22 third round win over Corsicana, a team MHS had faced in the playoffs the previous four seasons. In a back and forth affair, J. Bob Harris's 31 yard field goal with 20 seconds remaining kept the Lions season alive. Against Hereford in the semifinals two weeks later, Simmons ran for 234 yards, but it was the Lions defense that ensured the win with three interceptions in a 39-6 win before 10,217 fans at Texas Stadium. After the 1986 season, offensive lineman Robbie Thomason and Speed Ames, along with Honey and Simmons, each earned All-State honors for the Lions, who finished with a 14-2 record after a 21-9 loss to West Orange Stark in the state championship game. As the true definition of team, and for a season full of unforgettable moments, the Athletic Hall of Honor inducts the 1986 McKinney Lions football team as part of the class of 2020. Well, I had good morning, but good afternoon. <laughs> good to see you guys. Glad everybody's here. What a good looking group we have here today. It's impressive. Heck, Coach Poe, you look like you might even suit up later. We'll see. <laughs> but again, seriously, thank you guys for all being here today. What a special day. I'm honored to represent the winningest football team in McKinney ISD history. I think we've got some fact checking to do. I've got us at 15 and one. It might have an asterisk by it, but I, I still got us at 15 and one. I agree, coach. On behalf of my teammates, we are honored to be inducted into the McKinney ISD Hall of Honor. Congratulations to all the inductees being honored here today. Well deserved. <clears throat> As I re reflect back on our time growing up in McKinney, it was a special time and a special place. Wouldn't you agree? It sure was for me, and I'm sure it was for all my teammates. Uh, we might, may not have known what we wanted to be when we grew up, but we damn sure knew one thing. We wanted to be a McKinney line. 
The dream began for me back in elementary school, and I'm sure it did for my teammates as well. Grooming began early in McKinney. For me, my first coach, Poe, in fourth grade was Betty Poe. Thanks for uh, setting the foundation for me, Betty. Growing up, we lived for Friday Night Lights and couldn't wait to see the home team McKinney Lions wearing the blue and gold take the field. My football journey began in fifth grade, I think like a lot of years, with the McKinney Boys Club. Then we went on to Slaughter Junior High School, seventh and eighth grade, uh, where the young boys began to be groomed one day to be varsity McKinney Lions. In high school, you learned the value of hard work and commitment. There were a lot of white helmets we wore along the way until you earned the right to wear the gold hat with the signature blue block M on the side. You guys remember that? What we learned along the way not only paved the way for success on the football field, but I believe in life. Grit, teamwork, leadership, respect, discipline, attitude, winning, all come to mind. We learned how to win on and off the field. I still remember to this day, I think we were freshmen or sophomore. Coach Poe, you telling us anybody ever tells you it isn't about winning, they're lying to you. <laughs> there shouldn't be one single thing you like about losing. The taste in your mouth, the feeling in your gut, nothing. To this day, I still don't like anything about losing. I do want to thank all the coaches here today. You gentlemen built a winning culture and uh, it, winning culture in McKinney that was second to none. A special shout out to my position coach, Will Hodges. Thanks for believing in me and making the 1986 season a special year. Although we came up short in that state championship game, in 86, losing to West Orange Stark 21 to nine at the Astrodome. It was heartbreaking for the players and the fans. Ultimately, for me, it just became another life lesson that fueled a greater desire to, to achieve success beyond the gridiron. In closing, I would like to, to ask you please to keep our teammate and our friend Kevin Tarver and his family in your prayers. Now, I will leave you with some quotes I think you might remember if you were around the field house in the mid-80s. The Underwood twins are fighting again. <laughs> if that don't get your pee, pee hot, nothing will. <laughs> team me. A lot of teams in Texas wish they were practicing on Thanksgiving. Let's get after it. <laughs> Never. Never, never give up. And we ended every Friday or every Saturday, go to church on Sunday. I want to thank you for the memories, your friendships, and the life lessons learned. In behalf of my teammates, thank you for being here today, and God bless. Coach inductee Randall Hales. The beginning of Randall Hales' tenure as head baseball coach for the McKinney Lions may have been unexpected, but the results at the end of his 20 seasons were not. Starting at Slaughter Junior High in 1976, Hale soon became an integral part of Ron Poe's football staff, coaching in two state championship games and mentoring more all-district and all-state players than any other coach in MHS history. With eight games left in the 1984 baseball season, Hales, who was the Lions' assistant baseball coach, took over the reins. What followed? was the longest and most successful coaching tenure in Lions baseball history. Ten times he was named the District Coach of the Year, and he was also recognized as the Dallas Morning News Coach of the Year. With his 400-plus career wins, Hale's teams won nine district championships, two zone championships, and twice advanced to the region finals. His 2000 team posted an impressive 30-5 record and his 1993 district championship team won 29 games before being eliminated in the regional quarterfinals in the infamous foul ball game. 
for his unparalleled success as a coach, teacher, and leader. The Athletic Hall of Honor inducts Randall Hales as a member of the class of 2020. I've got my stopwatch. I was told I could only talk. I could only talk four minutes, but I have not done nothing in my life in four minutes. <laughs> and, and, you know, Coach Hodges said I couldn't make a complete sentence or four complete sentences in four minutes. <laughs> and then the last thing when we were talking about that at my table, my wife said you couldn't walk to the podium in four minutes. <laughs> So, I get no respect. <laughs> and, and, and I want to thank the Hall of Honor people that inducted me here. I want to thank McKinney Independent School District and Coach Poe for allowing me to be a part of this. I would like to thank my wife and my kids at my table, my wife Suzanne, Dr. Suzanne Hales, alias to some of you, Miss Coach Hales, uh, my oldest daughter Kelly, my youngest daughter and her husband, Emily and Cole Duke, and my sister, Joyce Hales. Now she is a, a northerner, so she hadn't been down here very long. But I, I, I would like to thank <laughs> I would like to thank her for helping me. If you will look in the center of your table, I have a gift for you. There is a wooden box. In that wooden box are tokens. I would like for you to get open that box, and each one at that table take that coin. Now, what that represents for me is that it represents friendship, camaraderie, and love. And that is a gift from me to you for allowing me to be a part of your life. The theme seems to be, as we listen to other people talk, oh. <laughs> I can't get back to zero. But the theme seems to be the leadership of divine intervention. <clears throat> the philosophy that you see on that coin one day at a time. As I look back over the years, that is tremendously true. My wife, or my, my kids, both were born with SIDS, that sudden end death syndrome. In the old days, they called it crib death. But because of divine intervention in modern medicine, they're with us today. Mike Sessom. I can remember standing at 
Parkland Hospital in 1990 was Darla, my wife, as his parents, wondering if he was going to live or not. Oh, by the way, Mike was one of the first kids, group of kids that I coached, and I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> but through divine intervention, and modern medicine, and the gifts that athletics of being a survivor gave him. He's still here. My wife, Suzanne, in 1998, was diagnosed with cancer. She is a cancer survivor of 22 years. And I dare say that she probably is one of the most fiery people. <laughs> that I know. And that competitiveness has served her well. And just a couple of days ago, she got out of the hospital, and she's up here today. Thank you for that. Betty Poe, in 2006, was struggling. She had to be wheeled in a wheelchair. She is a survivor. One day at a time. You got to take one day at a time. And I'm saying that to say all this. I'm here because of the good Lord, my faith and divine inter intervention. On July the 27th of 2012, I wasn't pronounced dead, but they gave me 30 minutes to live. My body had gone septic had some kind of infection. I don't know what it was. I still don't know what it was. Fever spiked at 105. They packed me in ice. I was in ICU for four days. And that was when Baylor was brand new. And I was in the hospital for four days. And my arm had swollen, my left arm, had swollen, and there's, uh, there are people in this audience that can verify everything I'm saying. Had swollen so big, they were afraid they would have to amputate my arm. But it wound up being okay, and for six weeks, five days a week, I spent two hours in a chamber hyperbolic chamber like athletes do now. And I'm here today. I am. <laughs> I am still here today because of the divine and divine intervention in modern medicine. And that's my story and the reason I chose my coin. 
Yep. Four minutes yet. I want to say this to you, that I became a coach because I wanted to. In 1970, my wife was coaching. We got married in 1974. And she was a 20-year-old 20, 20 girls basketball coach at Bridgeport, the town where we were living. And I was working for Hales Transport Company, which was the largest owner-operators in the state of Texas. In 1975, I went with Susie and her team to Santa Fe, to the Glorietta Mountains and Holy Ghost Canyon. If you've seen the Field of Dreams, you know there are voices out there. Kevin Costner heard it. <laughs> Named Earl Jones heard it. I heard it. I was told I wasn't doing what I need to be doing. So I walked away from the multi-million dollar business, went back to school for a teaching certificate, and became a coach. That's divine intervention. Four minutes. Oh, good. I appreciate that. I, I've been a, a talk about the history, and I know that there's McKinney North and McKinney Boyd, but when I was coaching, there was only McKinney High. And it was some to be a McKinney line. This inductee, or the induction into this Hall of Honor, today is the get greatest reward. besides being alive that I have received from my choice in 1975. And the rest is history. Thank you very much. And uh, we just want to say, Coach Hales, if you guys would stand and just, you know, all of y'all together, I just want to tell you we're, we're uh, very proud of you, and thank you for what you you did, and what here in McKinney, and for McKinney ISD athletics. And uh, as I said earlier, we will continue trying to to hold that torch, and uh, and and create the same uh, successes that you guys had before before us. So, uh, will everybody give give these guys a hand with me at once? <laughs>